Hello there, good evening and thank you for joining us on Rwanda Television News tonight. We do hope you had yourselves a great and fruitful day and now it's time for RTV News. This is what is coming up. Well, a few hours remain for Rwanda and the whole world in general to start the commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi. Residents say that they are content of the fact that they are living in a peaceful country. Entrepreneurs in Remera Kismeti Car Free Zone emphasized their concerns about continued losses since the introduction of Car Free Zone in weekends. A very great evening to you and welcome to Rwanda Television News with me, Sam Kalisa. And me, Martina Aveda. How are you, Martina? I'm very okay. How are you today? Very, very great. Okay. Right. As we kick it off uh, tonight, uh, let us uh, inform you that as we start uh, the bulletin that uh, on Thursday afternoon at Village Urugiro, President Paul Kagame received Her Excellency Yuxar Klo Kachar, President of the National Assembly of Slovenia and her delegation. The discussions focused on a shared values of unity, peace and mutual respect, as well as uh, key areas of uh, strength bilateral cooperation for beneficial for the benefit of our citizens of both uh, countries. Also on uh, Thursday, President Paul Kagame uh, met with uh, Hark Evans, a founder and CEO of Global Citizens, for discussions on uh, potential areas of uh, partnership. And uh, while a few hours remain for Rwanda and the whole world in general to start the commemoration of uh, the genocide against the Tutsi, residents uh, say that they are content of the fact that they are living in a peaceful country with no discrimination, which is different uh, from how it was in the past years. Olive Nete has uh, more. The 7th of April, 2023. It's been 29 years since Rwandans started commemorating the genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi. According to various residents, commemorating the genocide against the Tutsi is everyone's responsibility. Meanwhile, this Friday, Rwandans will start the week dedicated to commemorate the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994. We thank those who made it happen. We thank those who sacrificed themselves for the country. And we also appreciate the efforts of those who are contributing to its development. And we are happy of the fact that unity is growing stronger. Nobody is facing injustice. And we're also happy because nobody is discriminated against just because of his look. Whoever has the capacity to study has the chance to study the thing that was impossible in the past. Those who are able to work are working freely with no hindrances. All of that is achievements to be happy for. Commemorating the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda is something that everyone should value because it's the history of our country and we remember those days to see what has been damaged through it, to see what we learned from it and how it affected the progress of our country so that we can learn from it and build a better future of Rwanda without the dark history that we once went through. The president of Iwuka, Dr. Philbert Gakwenzire, notes that commemoration activities assist in healing wounds of the survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi. The person who is in pain doesn't comfort himself. That's why other Rwandans in various categories who are in various parts of the world during the genocide should support the survivors as a symbol of valuing them. And this literally shows that the commemoration activity is not only for the survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi. There are other programs that are included in the commemoration activities and it becomes an activity of joining forces so that those who have been hurt and who are still wounded can still be supported so that we can work together in the development of our country. The spokesperson of the Rwanda Investigative Bureau, Dr. Murangira Thierry, notes that although the crimes of denying the genocide against the Tutsi and the attacks on survivors are decreasing, there are still those who do it with the help of social media platforms. <laughs> Ingengabitechiriza genocide, nibya vifitanyi sana nayo, 
Even though the statistics of the past five years shows that the genocide ideology and crimes related to it has decreased to a percentage of 17.5%, even though the severity of crimes related to the ideology and those related to it are decreasing as well, moving from severe crimes such as killing people to just words. And even though there is a significant in the, in the fight against the ideology of the genocide, this gives us the responsibility to keep fighting the numbers that are still viewed, which comes as a result of expressions through abusive and hate words. Words that hurt survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi. We urge Rwandans to abstain from any activities that will lead to abusive languages that lead to the ideology against the genocide, including denying the genocide and supporting it in any way. We urge all people to contribute to the exchanges of fighting the ideology. Now the commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi has become an international event because it is participated by various countries and international organizations. Olive Nete, RTV News. Still on matters related to Kibuka 29, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, appreciates Rwandans for their important role in the unity and reconciliation programs that led their path of peace and restoration. Adam Squizera. It has been 29 years since Rwanda came out from the genocide against Tutsi. During those years, a lot was done to build the country free from discrimination for the purpose of sustainable development in various sectors of the country and through the contribution of unity and reconciliation plus self-reliance. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, while he was delivering the message dedicated to pay tribute to the victims of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, appreciated Rwandans for their important role in the unity and the reconciliation programs that led them to this path of restoration. We mourned one million children, women and men who perished in 100 days of horror 29 years ago. We honor the memory of the victims, the overwhelming majority Tutsi, we pay tribute to the resilience of the survivors. We recognize the journey of the Rwandan people towards healing, restoration and reconciliation. One of the things that is often pointed out as the cause of the implementation of the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda is the direct role of the international community as to the deaths and countries that have been seen in various activities, including supporting the genocide ideology, while others provide a refugee to the genocide perpetrators. This is where Antonio Guterres noted that now the world has to take actions in fighting genocide-related crimes and other crimes against humanity in the world. Remember with shame the failure of the international community. A generation since the genocide, we must never forget what happened and ensure future generations always remember. How easily hate speech, a key indicator of the risk of genocide, turns to hate crime. Our complacency in the face of atrocity is complicity. And our no place and no time is immune to danger, including our own. Preventing genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and other serious violations of international law is a shared responsibility. It is a core duty of every member of the United Nations. Together, let us stand firm against rising intolerance. Let us be ever vigilant and always ready to act. And let us truly honor the memories of all Rwandans who perished by building a future of dignity, security, justice and human rights for all. Since 2004, the United Nations has confirmed 7th April as an international day of reflection on the 1994 genocide against Tutsi in Rwanda. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Thank you, Adam Squizera, for that report. Now, 15 bodies of victims of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi were found behind the plot of the Mibirizi Catholic Parish in the Rusizi district. The umbrella for genocide survivors urges once again and reminds people and everyone who has information on the whereabouts of the bodies to give it out so that they can be given a decent burial. Jessica Agasero has more on this report. A big number of Tutsi fled to the Catholic parish of Mibirizi during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi from different parts of the region. When attacks came and they scattered around the surrounding areas where many got killed from. The area where these bodies were found is near the Mibirizi Catholic Church. The place have for a long time been used for agriculture, where terraces were created all around the area. According to some of the survivors, no one knew some bodies were there. 
because while digging terraces, they do not go deeper. Nari mpari cyane uko iki bigaragaza nuko hari gitero cyaje noneho I was there during the genocide against the Tutsi. The first group of attackers didn't find us, but another group came and found us. But some of us ran away and others were killed on their way fleeing. When you start digging the terraces, you find something blocking you in about 8 meters depth. Digging deeper, you find bodies from where we immediately stop digging and call people who are in charge. Of course, when we saw the first body, we panicked. And considering the history of Mubilizi, we understand that the bodies are for people who died during the genocide against the Tutsi. They started digging to dig the terraces on March 21st, and on March 23rd, they started discovering the bodies, one by one, until they reached 15. Jean-Baptiste Bakareke, the representative of Ibuka in the cell of Karemeye, declares that after seeing the bodies, they found evidence that they are for the victim of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, because the way they found them is different from those people who died and were buried normally, since there is a cemetery nearby. <laughs> hanyuma kandi akabari mu myambaro cyangwa se na serikeye biba ingombwa hanyuma kandi if someone is buried normally is deeper so there must be clothes on the body or at least a coffin but with these bodies we discovered that they were not deeper and it was obvious that there were no clothes and if you look closely the bodies are not in a good position that's how we see the difference between them and know that they were killed during the genocide against the Tutsi Despite the country and the world at large entering the 29th commemoration of the genocide committed against the Tutsi in 1994, there are still bodies that haven't been given a decent burial. Wakareke urged anyone with the information of the whereabouts of these bodies to provide it. It's very sad. The bodies must be given a decent burial and wish that we could find all the information of the people who were killed in the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994 and have never buried in an honor. There are people with such information out there and request them to provide it. It has been disclosed that there might still be a big number of bodies in under the terrace in different parts of Mibirizi, where a big number of Tutsi were killed. These 15 bodies will be added to the 13,000 already buried in the Mibirizi Genocide Memorial. Jessica Agasaro, RTV News. Now to matters related to education. The University of Rwanda has announced that there is a plan of moving more students who are pursuing bachelor's degree to the Huye campus to further improve the quality of education. Olim Nete with more. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Rwanda, Dr. Didas Kaihura, points out that there are some of the changes that will be conducted in this university with the aim of improving the quality of education and the well-being of staff and students. There are some programs that were in the university that were not really needed, such as over-specialization or early specialization, where in that program one course was as the foundation so that the student can be able to compete at the labor market in various sectors. For example, someone would be pursuing agriculture instead of having one course such as soil only, or study crops only, and you would find that the student has basic knowledge on the agriculture in general, where that student will study everything that entails in agriculture. We are also looking at how we can again increase the program to four years from three years so that the student can learn in deep those courses. While there are some of the departments in the program of bachelor's degree that will be moved to Huye campus, some of the students say that it should go hand in hand with increasing equipment and buildings in this campus. 
These changes that are going to be carried out are going to negatively affect students because students' accommodation is still a challenge. Dormitories are very few there and also the number of classrooms. <laughs> Normally, there was shortage of computer labs to students studying computer subjects, to the point where even those who were there would experience hardships while accessing to these labs. And when students will be moved there, it will be a great challenge to them. The administration of this university notes that it is planning and preparing for the betterment of this program. Despite even Huye, in other campuses, we are building other needed classrooms and also specifically dormitories because we still have shortage when it comes to students' dormitories, where in general we accommodate not more than 20% of them. And among them, we prioritize girls and those in the first year to help them because they are not usually used to the new environment. It is expected that some of the Kigali branches where the University of Rwanda used to operate will be establishments of master's degree and others will serve for various other purposes. Currently, the University of Rwanda has approximately 31,000 students. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive Nete, for that report. Now, entrepreneurs in Eremera, Kisimenti, Kafri Zone emphasize their concern of a gradually increase of loss after the introduction of Kafri Zone in the weekends. Prince Manzi has more. It was exciting for Kisimenti Eremera residents in February 2022 as the city of Kigadi announced that the KG38 Avenue Road will be a Kafri Zone in weekends for entertainment purposes. A few months later, the movement of people deducted and led to a loss to the business persons who attribute the loss to the introduction of the Kafri zone. After closing roads, we lost some of our clients. And during weekends, the only clients that we got are those buying expensive goods and passing by in their cars. It is hard for someone to leave his car to work to a shop when he could stop by in other places open near the road. People passing by here on feet are interested in beers, which are worth less than 10,000, and these VIPs no longer reach here. I'm the owner of these commercial houses, and the issue is that most of my clients left and in debt of at least three months, and you cannot blame them as they had no other choice. I also had a bank loan and it is difficult to pay it. If the Kafri zone was not to be there and the movement returned, our businesses would continue. On Thursday, the Minister of Trade and Industry, Dr. Jean Chrysostom Gavitinze, visited the Kisimenti Kafri zone and ensured the entrepreneurs that there will be a solution. They no longer have uh, good business. They are asking us to open the roads, uh, even during the weekends, because usually we close in the weekends, uh, because they think if you open the, the, the roads, the business will be more profitable. Uh, and of course, after this, I will discuss with my colleagues, the, the mayor of the city. We have had some discussions, the minister of Minaloc, the security organs, because we want this place to be profitable to Rwandans, but even for visiting or visiting Rwanda, people come here for businesses, for conferences, so they can have somewhere to stay in the weekend and enjoy uh, the, the life. So we, we hope to give them a feedback very soon. The Ministry of Trade and Industry states that together with the Kigali City, these entrepreneurs will be given the feedback in less than three days. Prince Manzi, TV News. Right, into matters related to uh, sports. Shows Gobjo Senumuchizaj and Jack Wilson is a star boy in the local uh, basketball tournament, but also in basketball in general. A game that is slowly winning the hearts of uh, many in the country. And in our profile segment today, Betty Mutoni uh, prepared a profile on Shows Let's go have it. When we talk about basket in Rwanda, we cannot forget the name Shobosgavjo Senumuchiza Jean Jacques Wilson, a famous guy in basket. In 2011, a guy with unique, unusual and very long name started playing basket. He's explaining how he started his career. 
I was in P5, I had like 9, 10 years. They introduced basketball at school. I was a footballer, so I said, let me give it a try. And they worked out, so since then, I continued. 1.83 of hate shows of Justin Mukiza. He is a big name and loved in the basket game. He makes the basket so interesting, and many people enjoy watching him play. Due to his tireless efforts, discipline and courage he shows while playing, Gwandans were very excited when he helped the reg basket team that he represented Rwanda to qualify for Basket African League in Senegal by shooting three points in less seconds of the match. He makes me happy and he encourages me to work hard to continue making my country proud. Whatever I do that involves the country, you have to set everything aside and serve the country first. I love it and it gives me courage to work hard. At the age of 24, Shows of Justin Mchiza has won different awards, including Player of the Match in different games at national and international level, and won a trophy recognizing him as Basketball African League player who has made tremendous impact in his community. The recent one I won is for helping children and Rafiki by training them. It is a great thing to train the young ones. There are some I inspire. Another one I won recently was for being among the top five good defender in BEL. Due to the training I do, energy I put in, it makes me happy to see good results out, so it gives me joy. Shavoskovtio Senumchiza has a dream of playing for NBA and he encourages the young ones to study first because due to studying he got to know basketball and he requests the government of Rwanda and all Rwandans to collaborate and make sure that basketball is promoted among the young ones. Something that can be done to promote basketball among the young ones is constructing basketball courts that are open and accessible by every child. Another thing is putting more efforts in young talents, introducing into school games, including primary, so that a child at six years can grow knowing basketball. That would help to advance. Shavuzgobjo Senumuchiza was born in Nyarujanja district and he plays for APR basket team in Rwanda National League. Betty Mutoni, RTV News. Right, this report sums up our tonight's edition, Martina, and on behalf of the entire news and production team, thank you for being with us. My name is Sam Kalisa. And my Martina Vera. And up until next time, stay safe. And have a great night. Bye. -bye.